In this video, we're going to look at naming and drawing cycloalkanes. First things, we're going to talk about what a cycloalkane is. So a cycloalkane is a closed ring structure with only single bonds between the carbons. Uh, here we have our most common six, our six most common cycloalkanes. So we have cyclopropane. So we add the word cyclo as a prefix in front of the alkane name. Cyclopropane, C3H6. Cyclobutane, C4H8. Cyclopentane, C5H10. Cyclohexane, C6H12. Cycloheptane, C7H14, and cyclooctane. I usually drop the second O for cyclooctane, so it's just a little easier to spell. And C8H16, I'm not going to draw 9 and 10 because it's just too hard. Um, with these, you can notice the general formula for cycloalkanes is CnH2n. So we have that one unit of unsaturation, even though these are saturated compounds. We're gonna look at naming cycloalkanes now. In this course, all of our cycloalkanes will be the parent chain. So we're not gonna to have to worry about making them a branch. So in this first example, we have our parent chain of six membered ring. So our parent is cyclohexane. We have two branches off of our cyclohexane. At the bottom, we have a methyl. And off to the right, we have an ethyl. So at this point, we need to number that ring. Now, important to note, there is no end to a ring. It keeps going in a circle. So number one, our first carbon, will always be at a branch or a functional group. So we have two options here. We can make carbon one our ethyl carbon or our methyl carbon. The second thing to consider is that we're going to number the ring so that our functional groups have the lowest possible sum when their locations are added together. In this case, we can number, if we number, sorry, methyl and ethyl, we end up with one and three in either direction. So if we make methyl number one, our sum will be four, one and three. Uh, so with methyl at C1, our sum is four, and our sum is also four with ethyl at carbon one. And so in this case, we need to look to the alphabet to break the tie. Okay, so in this case, we have a tie. We're gonna use the alphabet, which means that ethyl is going to win out, and ethyl will be carbon one, and methyl will be carbon three. So we put this all together, and the name of our compound, once we list them in alphabetical order, will be 1-ethyl, 3-methyl, cyclohexane. We're going to go through another example here. Uh, this time we have a different parent. So our parent here is the five-membered ring, cyclopentane. We have functional groups or branches. So we have an ethyl off to the right. And then we have two methyls off to the left. So once we look at the naming here, we need to look at the sum. So if we were to start with our ethyl, so I'll just say ethyl C1, our sum would be location one plus, so carbon one, two, three, and four. So location one plus three plus four, so our sum is eight. If instead we make a methyl carbon one, uh, our sum is going to be one 
plus 2 plus 4. So carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. And that adds to 7. And so the sum dictates that one of our methyls is going to be carbon 1. In this case, it doesn't actually matter which one we assign. So I'll assign this one on the left, uh, on the top, and then rotate counterclockwise to number the rest of the carbons on the ring. So once we've numbered our carbons, we can now list everything alphabetically. So we'll have 4-ethyl, 1,2-dimethyl, cyclopentane. And as a reminder, we covered this with alkanes, but that di does not count towards the alphabetization. Next up, we're going to look at drawing a cycloalkane. So first things, we're going to break this name down. So we're going to start with our parent chain, cyclohexane. So that's a six-membered ring. So we're going to draw a hexagon. And it doesn't matter where you decide number one is. Um, it, it literally has no meaning on the ring. I'm going to assign number one to be the top of the ring, and then I'm going to rotate in a clockwise direction. So I've numbered my carbons within the ring. I'm now going to put on my two branches. So ethyl is going to go at carbon one, and ethyl is a two carbon branch. And then I will put propyl at carbon three. That's a three carbon branch. And just one more example of naming. So here our parent chain is cyclobutane, so that's going to be a square. Again, it doesn't matter where you assign carbon one. Uh, we have one, two dimethyl. So I'll make carbon one this top right corner, and then carbon two just rotating clockwise. 